a very warm good morning to one and all so my name is dipanshi and today we are going to study about the silicones so so silicones are the type of the inorganic polymers so now today we are going to study about the silicones so before studying silicones we will firstly study about the inorganic polymers because silicon is a type of inorganic polymer so what does inorganic polymer means so as the name suggest polymers polymers these are the long chains of macromolecules which have the high molecular weight and these are having the similar subunits which are reoccurring through a fixed period so silicones are a kind of inorganic polymers we have various polymers organic as well as inorganic polymers so we had organic polymers then we shifted to inorganic polymers so what's the reason behind it is uh, when we talk about the uh, organic polymers then in organic polymers we all know the organic the compounds which contain the carbon hydrogen oxygen and many other mainly the focus is on the carbon so organic polymers they mainly contain the carbon atom so due to uh, the carbon atom has the valency of 4 that it can make the side bonds with only the four other atoms so we move to inorganic polymers because these offer a variety of advantages over the organic polymers uh, such as few advantages of the inorganic polymers over the organic polymers is that the inorganic polymers are they are stronger as compared to the organic polymers they are longer in the case of the stronger they are strong and as well as they are um, thermally stable even at higher temperatures and the inorganic polymers they are resistant to the free radical cleavage reaction resistant to free radical cleavage reactions and along with this i was talking about the valency of carbon it was having a valency of 4 but in the case of inorganic polymers uh, they can extend their valency extend their valency and can make bond with various substituents they can be greater than 4 substituents i can say are the side groups so now the next thing is uh, they are flexible the inorganic polymers these are flexible and these react these have ability to react with various chemical reagents uh, the same abilities of the organic polymers but the inorganic polymers can react with a variety of other reagents so now let's study about the main our main focus would be now the inorganic polymers so we have studied that why we have chosen the inorganic polymers over the organic polymers so now i will tell you about the inorganic polymers let what are inorganic polymers so i will write inorganic polymers so generally the elements which are in the periodic table which comes under the category of inorganic polymers these are the elements which are present in group it might not be visible so i'll take this one um elements in group 13th 14th 15th and 16th along with this some transition elements are also involved in making the inorganic polymers so um, the elements which are present in these groups which are involved in making the inorganic polymers those are silicon germanium phosphorus tin boron aluminum 
sulfur and a variety of other transition elements are also involved so generally the main kind of inorganic polymers these are I will take this one silicones and phosphagenes which are mainly studied due to variety of applications silicones and phosphagenes in my topic I am starting here which is silicones so I hope you have got some idea about the inorganic polymers and now it would be easier for you to know about the silicones so I will write silicones as its name suggests you got some idea about it silicones that means it might be containing the silicon atom it contains the polymers of the organo silicon derivatives so when I was talking about the inorganic polymers I forgot to tell you that the inorganic polymers uh, these were the long chain macromolecules which were having the high molecular weight but along with this the inorganic polymers do not only contain the elements simply but they also contain the organic molecule as a part of their uh, as, as their part so when I am talking about the silicones then these are the polymeric organo silicones polymeric organo silicones so organo silicones that means they are containing some organic part along with long chain of silicone so what does it the generally the silicones they contain silicon oxygen silicon linkage means the two silicon subunits are attached by one oxygen atom so if I am talking about the structure of silicon single subunit then the silicon contains two alkyl groups attached to it with one oxygen atom and here any molecule can be present it can be R or it can be oxygen so that it can extend its chain and these are the polysiloxanes that means silicones so polysiloxanes why, why we call them with another name that is polysiloxane the fact behind it is siloxane means it contains the oxygen atom silicon and long chain of repeating subunits that's why it is known as polysiloxanes so now I will tell you about various the properties of this silicones so now let's continue with the properties of silicones I have told you about the silicones so now it has a variety of properties uh, due to which it is used so firstly I'll tell you about the silicone so its structure can be linear it can be cyclic or it can be cross-linked so these three kind of structures it can possess now its first property is its high thermal stability I hope you know about high thermal stability high means at higher thermal mean heat stability means it's stable so it is quite stable even at the higher temperatures when the temperature is very high it is stable due to this property of uh, silicones uh, it is being used by various chemists in the high temperature processes useful in high temperature processes and it is also used due to these high temperature applications it is also used as the heat transfer agents the agents which can be used to transfer heat so as a heat transfer agents it can be used and as I have told you the property of inorganic polymers they are highly flexible so it's it has the high performance elastomers so these were the properties of silicones that uh, how they are formed and what the property they offer generally the inorganic polymers they were huge means the biggest property of there is uh, they are stable at high temperatures so due to this property only they are generally used over the uh, organic polymers or generally the polymers which are made up of the carbon atoms so now let's move on to our next topic here only 
which is its nomenclature as you all know nomenclature is a naming so in the chemistry we prefer iupac naming so how silicones are named means if you are given with a subunit of silicon then how you are going to name it so it's a very easy uh, i'm talking about the iupac system that in iupac system how the silicones are named so generally the silicon exist in the form of silicon hydrides as in the organic chemistry we discuss about methane that are the carbon hydrides so similarly in the case of silicons there are generally silicon hydrides the formula cih4 which is uh, uh, nearly similar nearly it's matlab completely similar to the methane ch4 so as we name methane for ch4 so in the same case we name the silicon hydride as silane so c sih4 is named as silane you can see whenever we will replace any of the hydrogen then its name how it gets changed means then if i am uh, having sorry if i am having three hydrogens and two silicon subunits are attached to it that then it is two subunits that means di and silane is its basic body we can say it's a backbone is silane so it is known as di silane what happens if we join three silicon subunits to one and r then its name will be tri silane it's so simple tri means three silane means silane subunits so it's a quite simple naming but what happens when this hydrogen is replaced by some other side group such as a methyl group replaces one hydrogen then its name will be methyl silane firstly we'll write the name of the side group which is attached to it and then we'll write its backbone which is silane so now i will tell you some other such as chlorine if two chlorine are attached to silicon subunit as you know the silicon has a valency of 4 so similarly uh, h2 and two chlorine so it, its name will be dichlorosilane uh, these were quite simple these were just basic naming what happens if other than these derivatives means uh, some hydroxy derivatives of silanes or some other thing in the case of hydroxy derivatives of silane so how these are named i am going to tell you that such as if i am having h3 sioh so its name will be similar as methanol so here it will be silanol ol you all know because ol is the name of the functional group oh oh is alcohols and the name in Uh, as a functional group when they are present they are named as ol so it is a silanol similarly if two oh groups will be presented it will be silane diol if three then silane triol but what happens if some other group such as methyl group is attached to this silanol so its name will be trimethyl silanol it's quite simple So now I'll move on to the oxo derivatives. Now let's talk about the oxo derivatives of silanes. So oxo derivatives are generally named as siloxanes, as the hydroxy derivatives are now known as silanols. So these are known as siloxanes. For example, I am giving you an example: SiH3 linked by oxygen molecule with another SiH3. Then its name is di-siloxane. If Si uh, oxo derivatives can only exist in this form because an oxygen group must be present to attach the two subunits. It's acting as a bridge, so its name is di-siloxane. So if I am having in place of hydrogen methyl groups. some similar linkage then it will be named as firstly we'll name the side groups and then the backbone will write so its name will be hexamethyl 
diacyloxane. Hexamethyl because six methyl groups are present, and di because two silic silicons are attached to one another with the oxo linkage. So its name will be hexamethyl siloxane. So now the substituted siloxanes. These are named after the name of the parent compound. For example, if we are having three chlorine molecule in the place of methyl, then its name would be like hexa chloro. Diacyloxane. So, if uh, we combine both oxo group as well as I am having one hydroxyl group also present with it, so its name. How to name this? In this case, I'll name it as I am having both these groups. So, firstly, I'll name uh, the backbone, then functional group because functional group is generally named at the end. So, its name will be. Diacyloxane, and as I know, it can't be ane because I am having OH. In the case of methane, all all we add. So here I'll write it will be diacyloxanol because OH is present. So its name will be diacyloxanol. Now I'll talk about the polymers. How to name the polymers? Of silicon, so if I am having a polymer which is containing the two CH three groups with O, and it's linked on both sides with another silicon subunit, so its name will be I'll write outside poly because N subunits will be present. Poly then bracket start. Now it is having two methyl groups, and similar oxo linkage is present. So it's A kind of a siloxane, so its name will be poly dimethyl siloxane. So in this way, we can name other polymers as well. Similarly, we can name other polymers. So it's all about the nomenclature. Any compound, if it is, if it comes, then you can name a thing. Now it's quite simple to you, ah, uh, to write the nomenclature of silicons. This was all for today, and in the next lecture we'll study about the preparation of silicons, that how these silicons we can prepare, and different reactions, different properties of silicons, that with what chemical compounds these reacts, and then we'll study about how we can form the three different structures which I have talked about, ah, uh, that cyclic, linear, or the cross-linked polymers. How we can go for the formation of those silicons. so it's up for the next if you like my lecture then please like it and if you want to get my more lectures for you then please subscribe and comment in the box if you have any doubts regarding any of the topics which you don't understand thank you for today